we saw how to solve right triangles. How about if it's a triangle that isn't necessarily an angle, a triangle that has a right angle in it. If, it's, uh, if you don't have right angles anywhere, it's an oblique triangle. It could be an oblique triangle where all the angles are acute, all of them less than 90 degrees. Or there would be room for one of the angles to be bigger than 90 degrees. It could be an obtuse angle and two acute angles. Either way, this would be a triangle, and it still should be the case that the geometry of the triangle constrains the angles and the sides so that uh, you could come up with, from partial information, the missing information that's, uh, that's not given. You could calculate its values. You could determine them geometrically, so you ought to be able to calculate them. We're going to be doing a couple techniques for that the next couple lectures. There's the law of sines, and we'll talk about the law of cosines the next time. So we want to do the same thing for oblique triangles that we did for right triangles. Find the lengths of the sides and the measurements of angles from given information, partial information about sides or angles. Now geometrically, you might think about how you could do that one way if you try to sketch in a triangle in terms of a side and two angles of the triangle, then doing that might be enough to constrain the missing angle and the missing side so that you have the triangle determined. Another possibility, instead of being given two angles and one side, you could be given two sides and one angle. These first two cases, the angles are, the first case, the angles are with the side outside. If the side's in between, you could keep track of that in a case side, angle, side. And a fourth possibility is all three sides. So let's look at what those look like. Here's the given information is a side and an angle that is beside it. So here is angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. And here's the case where it is side, angle, angle. Notice the difference. It's like you start here and you march around the triangle and you're taking inventory of what you're given. A side, an angle, an angle. So S-A-A. -A. You could call this A-A-S if you want to. And this one is given an angle, given a side in between, given another angle, angle, side, angle for that one. Another possibility is given a side, given a side, given an angle. Here's a less polite way to say that one, given an angle, given a side, given a side. I didn't say that. One possibility is for that case three, side, angle, side. And the last possibility given three sides, side, side, side. And that determines a triangle. You stick the pieces together and you know what this angle has to be in this angle and this angle. So sometimes it's just right for a particular algebraic tool, the law of sines, for some of those cases. It turns out to be case one or case two that the law of sines is appropriate for. Side, angle, 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 side, angle, or side, side, angle. Now what I'd like to do is what I'd like you to do is to not think about it in terms of memorizing it like case and I'm going to use this condition. Rather, I would like you to take a triangle and see what's given and what you need and figure out which algebraic law will get you there. The law of sines that we're going to talk about today or another law. So what's the law of sines say? It is a relation between sides and angles opposite those sides. Notice that C for a right triangle was opposite the right angle, which we're calling gamma since it's not necessarily a right angle here. 
the law of sines is that this ratio, the sine of the angle to the length of the side opposite the angle, stays the same. Sine of alpha is to A, as sine beta is to B, and sine beta is to B, as sine gamma is to C. So there's the ratio. Now, I, ha I hate to have a situation where you're just given the information and expected to believe it. It's nice to see why it's so, and mathematics has this very nice property that you don't have to take things on faith. There is a reason that this works. Think of that as a proof in at least one case. Let's label the sides of the triangle A opposite alpha, B opposite beta. And in that triangle, I'm going to keep track of that part of the law of sines where I'll have sine alpha over A, sine beta over B. To make that relevant to what I know, to get right triangle trigonometry to kick in, let me drop a perpendicular. That perpendicular determines the height of that triangle, say H, and what we've got is H is a part of this triangle on the left and a part of this triangle on the right. So that sine of alpha, looking at the triangle on the left as opposite over hypotenuse H over B, the value of H then you could solve for in terms of those parts B sine alpha. And looking at it from this triangle, this time, sine of beta is for the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Height over A would be the hypotenuse of this triangle. So again, solving for H, A sine beta. That means B sine alpha, that value of H, is the same H that's A sine beta. And from the fact then that B sine alpha equals A sine beta, we've got that part of the law of sines. Now the extra condition that was mentioned there, sine gamma over C, is the same relationship you could get by relabeling the sides of the triangle to have it in terms of an angle gamma and the side C opposite it to get the third ratio guaranteed to match. The other fact that's useful in solving oblique triangles is to use the angle sum fact that the sum of the angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. That comes in handy once in a while. So let's try an example. I'll be given alpha, beta, and a value for A. Let me draw that in so that you can see what it might look like. Beta is 70 degrees. Alpha is 30 degrees. B, I don't know. C, I don't know. A is 5. This is enough information to geometrically determine this triangle. You couldn't draw it any other way in terms of the relative sizes of the sides and the angles than the way I've drawn it. It's determined, so it ought to be determined algebraically. So let's see. Maybe the first thing to do is to grab the easy thing first, 70 degrees, 30 degrees. Let's get gamma from the angle sum fact. Alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degrees. Plugging in what I know for alpha and beta, I have gamma is 80 degrees. So there's one of the missing parts of the triangle. Let's get another missing part. Let's go at it by figuring out we know an angle and a side opposite. So that's alpha and A. Sine alpha is to A. Let's get B now by saying the ratio here is side sine of an angle and the side opposite. So sine of an angle, side opposite for this pair matches sine of the angle, side opposite for this pair. And that's just fine to solve for B. In that set of information, I've got three of four things known. And I can solve for the unknown part. B is 5 sine 70 over sine 30 when I cross multiply and solve for B. And the numerical value comes out to be about 9.4. You could get that from the calculator if you'd like. 5 
times the sine of 70 degrees, 70 sine equals divided by sine 30. Well, I know that's 0.5, but I could, well, I'm just going to do it that. 0.5 for the sine of 30 degrees, and there's the value 9.3969 rounds to 9.4. So there's one of the missing sides. Let's get the other missing side. To get C, we know gamma now, and a pair of an, with an angle and side opposite. Angle, side opposite matches angle and side opposite. And again, using angle and side opposite that was given, I can solve for the unknown piece C, and C comes out to be 9.85. You can look at this. If this is drawn roughly to scale, and this is five units, this looks like it's not quite twice as long. So B, 9.4 is consistent, and C looks like it's a little longer than B. Again, that's consistent with the scale of the picture as I drew it. Another example. Solve the triangle alpha equals 20 degrees, beta equals 60 degrees, and C is 12. When I draw this in and make a labeling, I've got a 20 degree angle, opposite side A, since that's alpha, a 60 degree angle, opposite side B, so that was, since that was beta. So C has to be the side opposite the third angle, C opposite gamma. So I've drawn in the picture relative to that. Let's solve the triangle. Again, I can use the angle sum fact to start things off and say what gamma is equal to. Gamma is 100 degrees in this case. So let's get the unknown side A. Angle, side opposite, angle I know, side opposite, so sine of 20 degrees over a is to A, as sine of 100 degrees is to 12, and in this ratio pairing up, I've got only one thing unknown, so I can solve for that. The value of A comes out to be 12 sine 20 degrees over sine 100 degrees, 4.17. And now for the third side, B, 60 degrees I know, B I don't know. Now I've got a pair of an angle and a side opposite. So I can solve for B, 12 sine 60 degrees over sine 100 degrees. And the calculator again gives me a value out for B, 10.55. My picture, that looks like that's reasonable, less than the longest side of the triangle bigger than what I found to be the shortest side. Now there's some interesting variations. I've got two to show you things that can happen. Side, side, angle. To solve the triangle B equals 5, C equals 3, and beta equals 30. One way to draw that in is to put a 30 degree angle opposite side 5, so beta and B. C is 3 opposite angle gamma unknown. A is opposite alpha that's unknown. So again, the three pieces of information ought to be enough information to determine the missing three. Let's try to make that happen. Sine of 30 degrees over the given side 5, so sine of an angle to the side opposite. Let's do sine of an angle to the side opposite, and I've got the side opposite, so this time it's gamma that I don't have. So sine of gamma goes in the law of sines, and if I sine, solve for sine of gamma, the value that I get out is 0.3. Now the interesting thing is this trig equation has room for two solutions. One solution, if I just ask the calculator for the angle whose sine is 0.3, so let's see, 0 0.3 in degrees, the angle whose sine is that, you click inverse sine, and what comes out is 17.4 something, 17.5 degrees. But the thing is, there is another angle that would fit in the triangle that has the same value of sine. Remember, sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, and there's a quadrant 2 angle that works too. It's the supplement of this angle. 
162.5 degrees. So depending on which one I choose, I, I could have two angles, two, two possible triangles to draw. Now in this case, there is a problem since I know that I've got a 30 degree angle already. If I chose gamma 2 to be this angle, 162.5, that makes gamma plus the known angle beta too big. 30 degrees more than this is more than the angles in a triangle can be. So in this case, this case can't happen. I have to allow for it as far as solving the trig equation, but in fact, In fact, it can't for ex exceeds the angle sum fact, so we're stuck with a value of alpha that is has to be the third angle in the sum of 180 degrees of 30 degrees and 17.5 degrees. So alpha has to be kind of as I've drawn it, 132.5. So now to continue with that value of alpha, the missing sine of alpha is to A as sine of gamma was to C. Plugging in the known values for 30 degrees and 5 there and, and 132.5, we can calculate A as the missing number in that ratio 7.37 and that's that length. And that means we've got all the missing pieces. We've got A that we calculated, B and C that were given, beta that was given, the gamma that works, and the alpha. Now here's a situation where an angle side to side where uh, something more interesting happens. B equals H, C equals 10, and beta equals 45 degrees. If you try to draw that and come up with something, let's see, we've got beta and B, C, so let's go for gamma. Sine gamma is to C as sine beta is to B, and in this ratio matching, we've got one unknown thing, sine gamma. Sine gamma is 0.88, so if you ask the calculator for the inverse sine of 0.88 in degrees, it's 62.1 degrees. And the supplement to that, the corresponding angle in quadrant 2, is 180 minus 62.1. That's 117.9. This time, there is room. 117.9 plus 45 is less than 180. And 162.1 plus 45 is less than 180. So there's plenty of room to have two ways that you could solve the equation and two triangles arise as satisfying those uh, the given information. So the law of sines, in this case, side-side angle, can make it happen that there are two triangles that work. And so the solution proceeds to keep track of the two triangles. So triangle one, we've got a value for gamma. Gamma one, 62.1. Then the alpha that goes with that gamma, I'll put a one there to keep track of it. Alpha one is the third angle to make 180 degrees for the angle sum, so 72.9. Then we can use that value of alpha 1 to say sine alpha 1 over the side opposite A is sine 45, that given angle over 8. And A1 is about 10.91. What we have is A1 as a given value, B and C. So we've got that solution. Now let's go back and pick the situation where I have a gamma as the other possibility, 117.9. The arithmetic's different in this case. The alpha 2 is the 
third angle. It's a small angle in that case. And we can use that smaller angle, alpha 2, to find the side opposite it if we draw the triangle in that way. Sine alpha 2 over A2 is the sine of the given angle over, what was that, sine of beta over B. So solve this time, and a different calculated value for A2 comes out, and that is a different looking triangle that satisfies the same given information. You think it's bizarre that there are two triangles that work. Here's, a, here's another situation. Looks like numbers that you could draw in. C equals 5, B equals 3, beta equals 50 degrees. Now if you just try to lay that out with a ruler and compass and draw that in, you'll find a problem. 50 degrees, 5 units up here, and 3 units down doesn't stretch so that this triangle doesn't close up. There's no triangle with the given measurements, and that shows up analytically if you try to apply the law of sines. Sine 50 degrees over 3, so 50 degrees to 3, if you tried to lay it out as a ratio, sine of an angle, side opposite, to figure out what this angle would be, it's the angle opposite side of length 5, so gamma opposite C equals 5, sine gamma over 5, and when you go through the arithmetic, the condition on gamma is that sine of gamma is the number 1.28. And you remember that sine has range minus 1 to 1. It never takes on a value bigger than 1, so the demand on sine of gamma by what the law of sines would require makes it impossible for uh, an angle to exist. So you can't draw it and you can't calculate it. It's neat when one impossibility reinforces the other one. All of these are based on this relation between sine of an angle and the side opposite matching at that ratio staying the same no matter which pair of angle and side opposite you choose in a given triangle. The Law of Sines.